Father, it's in Jesus' name we come before your throne again. Lord, I enter your gates with thanksgiving. I come before you with praise. God, I bless you, I honor you. I worship and I adore thee, O oh God. Lord, because you're God and you deserve all the praise. You deserve worship. You deserve thanksgiving, dear Lord. And I thank you, Lord, because of who you are. You are God Almighty, the almighty everlasting God, the self-existent God, the creator, the sustainer, O oh God. And I just thank you, Lord, for affording us, O oh God, this opportunity, Lord, to give your name praise, honor, and glory again. Lord, I bless you, I honor you, I worship, and Lord, I adore you. God, from last week until this week, here we are again, God. God, you kept us, you sustained us. God, you supplied our need, you protected us, you kept our bodies healed, our mind healed, oh God. And I just want to say thank you. God, we have no uh, complaints, oh God. Nothing but praise and thanksgiving in our hearts for you. And God, I pray now that as I come before your throne, God, I come, God, as humble as I know how, calling upon you, the one who told us, oh God, to come to your throne, the one who told men to always pray. And God, we thank you for prayer. We thank you for the effect. We thank you for the power of prayer because you said in your word, the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. And God, much has been accomplished through prayer. God, you're listening. You are attentive to the prayers of the righteous. God, at all times, hallelujah. Many prayers you've answered, oh God. And many prayers are waiting to be the prayer, oh God. The answer is waiting to be manifested, oh God. And we just thank you, Lord, because you said in your word, our prayers come up before your nostril, Lord, as a sweet smell and savor, oh God. I thank you, God, for the fragrance of our prayer. God, we thank you now for being attentive, Lord. And as I come, God, I pray, God, for those that are listening, those that are watching it, oh God, everyone, oh God, I come and stand in the gap for them. I intercede for them, Lord, whoever they are, my God, wherever they are, you know, God, you know everything. There's nothing hidden from you. There is no secret, oh God. And I just lift everyone up now, God, that one, oh God, waiting, oh God, on deliverance, that one, oh God, waiting to hear a word that will lift them and lift him and lift her, dear Lord. I bring them, oh God, before your throne right now, Lord. You know their innermost secret, their innermost hurt, their innermost pain, their innermost desire, God. You know all about it now, Lord God. Hallelujah. And I just pray, God, that as your word come forth, Lord, that they'll hear something that will lift them, that will give them the encouragement, that will give them strength to go on, oh God. Because, God, you are the strength giver. Oh, God, you are the problem solver there, Lord God. And I bring them, oh, God, hallelujah. And I thank you, God. I thank you, oh, God, for lifting and delivering, oh, God, from anxiety this morning, Lord. Those that are so full of anxiety, emotions running everywhere, Lord God. I bring them before your throne right now, Lord. You know who they are. You know where they are, Lord. That one that's in deep depression, oh God. That one that's in a dark place right now. Father, hallelujah. Oh God, I call upon you for her now. I call upon you for him now, Lord God. I pray that the Spirit of God, your quickening spirit, Lord, will move in their midst right now. Will hallelujah. Oh God, will deliver them even now, God, in the name of Jesus, Father. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Your people need help. Your people need you, Lord. All over this world, all over this universe, here in this community, oh God, people need you, Lord. And you said to come to your throne. And at your throne, God, you said we will find mercy and grace to help in the time of need. And God, we thank you right now because you know every need. You know every hurt. You know every pain. You know every anxiety. You know every dilemma. You know every problem. Oh, glory. And we thank you, God, because we call it upon the one who's able, oh God, to do whatever needs to be done, Father. We just thank you, Lord, that, that, oh God, how you're blessing us and how you're keeping us during this time, oh God. The pandemic is all around us, oh God. But God, in the midst of it all, you are keeping us. You are inspiring our heart. God, you've given us to go on. God, you're strengthening us. Hallelujah. And you're just lifting us every day. We thank you for the visionaries, oh God. Thank you, hallelujah, for the man of God, the 
vision, oh God. I pray, Lord, that the vision would be carried out continually in the name of Jesus. Many are being helped through the vision. Many are being healed. Many, oh God, hallelujah, are being delivered through the vision, oh God. You said in your word, without a vision, your people perish. And God, I pray right now. Keep your people with a vision. My God, we may not be able to come, be not able to become, oh God, on Sundays for service, oh God. But the church goes on in our heart. God, we thank you, my God, that we can yet, hallelujah, come together over the airways, however, Lord, and we can hear the word of God. We can hear the singing. We can hear praise and worship. And God, when that's over, Lord, your spirit, oh God, keep us going. Even in our home, we can yet worship you. We can praise you. We can magnify you. Hey, God, hallelujah. Thank you, God. As we walk, as we ride, we hallelujah. The worship is inside of us. The praise is inside of us. And we thank you, Lord. We give you praise, thanksgiving right now for everyone and everything you have done, God, in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for everyone everywhere. My God, my God, look on our young people. Look on our babies in a special way. Keep them, Lord. Cover them. Protect them, oh God. Hallelujah. As they go back in school this week, Lord. Oh, my God, I pray that you go with them, that you cover them, keep them. The student, oh God, the teachers, the entire staff. Be with them all, I pray, in the name of Jesus. God, we can come to you. We can trust you. And we can depend on you because you are. God, hallelujah, and you said in your word, with God, all things are possible, and God, I thank you right now for doing the things that man thinks impossible, but God, with you, Lord, nothing is impossible, and God, we thank you for moving right now, we thank you, God, for doing whatever needs to be done, hallelujah, we bless you, oh God, we worship you, we really, God, hallelujah. Ah, we honor you, Lord. We give you all praise, glory, and honor. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Thank God, amen, amen, and amen. To God be the glory. Good morning, and welcome to our digital worship experience on this third Sunday in the month of September. We welcome you into this place, into this space. We welcome you to worship with us in spirit and in truth. I encourage you now, as always, get your space together wherever you are, center yourself, prepare yourself, your heart, mind, and soul for worship. We do that symbolically each and every week as we enter into the sanctuary. So join me as we enter the house of worship on this morning. Here at Grace, we are a people who are committed to connecting to all creation with love, compelled to cultivating all those connections with grace, and conditioned to confronting all circumstances with hope. That's who we are. That's why we remind ourselves of that each and every week so we never forget who we believe ourselves to be as a community of believers. If you're visiting with us for the first time, we say welcome. To all of our members and consistent visitors, we say welcome back. Now let us join together on one accord this morning as we worship God together in spirit and in truth. God bless you. Come on, as you worship with us on this Sunday, think of all the good things that God has done for you.
Amen, amen. We thank God for this beautiful Sunday morning that we're able to worship together in spirit and in truth. We thank God for the spirit of worship and the spirit of love and unity that, that binds us all together. Let, let's go to the word on today. And let me, let me forewarn you, this, this may not be a word for everyone, but, but anyone who feels called to this ministry and, and have been joined to this ministry in this season, May you have an ear to hear the word of God on today. I want to go to a passage of scripture found in the book of Numbers, the third chapter, and I just want to lift verses 11 through 13. Numbers, the third chapter, beginning at verse 11. And I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. We find these words. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, I hereby accept the Levites from among the Israelites as substitutes for all the firstborn that open the womb among the Israelites. The Levites shall be mine, for all the firstborn are mine. When I killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I consecrated for my own all the firstborn in Israel. Both human and animal, they shall be mine. I am the Lord. Let us pray. Oh God, may the words from my mouth and the collective meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, oh God, for you're indeed our rock, our strength, and our redeemer. And for that, we say thank you. Now, oh God, speak, for we all need to hear from you on today. Grant me the courage, oh God, to declare what you have ministered to my heart. We love you, O oh God, and it's in your holy and precious name we pray, and we say amen. Amen. I want to speak today from the theme, do you belong to God? Do you belong to God? In these trying times, I, as many of us, praying and and seeking God and trying to discern the voice and the move of God, even in our midst, in the midst of all that might be going on, those of us in and of the faith, we never let circumstances dictate our connection to God. And so thereby, no matter what the circumstances, our call is always, how do we discern, see, find, seek, the hand, the move, the action, the presence of God in the midst. Because wherever the presence of God is at work, the presence of God in us is drawn to join God in that work. And dare I say, I believe in this particular time that we find ourselves living and having our being, that, that God is at work in a major way. When we look at the condition of the church, and I don't mean particular churches, but, but the church, the community of believers who are aligned with God, identified as children of God, the church is on the move. There's something that's happening that's causing the church to become reflective as to what made the church in the first place. It's causing the church to rethink what matters when we talk about church in the first place? And, and because of all of these things, we're seeing now the church having to, to recommit, redefine, recreate itself in the midst of a pandemic that has relegated the buildings, for the most part, useless. And in discerning and in praying and in connecting and meditating with God, I was drawn to this particular passage of scripture that for me connects so well with what Jesus was doing when Jesus was at work in Jesus's ministry. And, and one of the things that, that I, I know it's been a disconnect for many of us who grew up in the church, who, who know church, who know good church, who, who knows what it means to, to be a Christian, to understand the identity as Christian, Oftentimes, we miss a major point of this all because we have been introduced to a connecting Jesus by a disconnecting church. Now, let me tell you what I mean by that. 
that oftentimes when we think about all that Jesus embodied and everything that Jesus sought to convey to any of those who were willing and bold enough to follow him, Jesus was offering a connection to God, a reconnection to the source of our creation. And so therefore Jesus was, his desire, his will was to introduce the possibility of being one with God while we engage the living of life that God has created us to have and bear in creation. But for many of us, we've been introduced to that Jesus by a disconnecting church, a church that has prioritized a, a worship and reverence of a distant God rather than reclaiming and owning what Jesus offered as an intimate connection to God. A disconnecting church that places more priority on the rigors of, of tradition, the rigors of, of all of the, the decrees, the rigors of, of the, the, the doctrine and all of that as opposed to celebrating what the opportunity is before us to embrace our identity as children, as being able to share in the intimate connection of oneness with the Father. Disconnecting church cannot in and of itself introduce or prioritize or celebrate or really push the intimate, the nature of the intimate connection that Jesus not only embodied but that he offered to any who were willing to follow him. And, and when we think about about that, it, it pains my heart because I believe that when Jesus encountered the ground of ministry as he engaged with those who were around him, especially the religious leaders, those who knew scripture, who knew the word, who knew the tradition, who understood how to outline worship, who knew the rules and the regulations. When he was introduced to the ground of ministry among those who understood all about God, but they were not themselves living the spirit of the message that they proclaimed. When Jesus looked around and saw the condition of the people of God, the condition of those who were being uh, taking advantage of, the condition of those who who were, who were worshiping God under the authority of those who were abusing the very scriptures that they claimed to proclaim. You can imagine Jesus looked at that landscape and understood more so then than ever why God would purpose him to live and become all that God intended for him to do and accomplish in his earthly ministry. Because when we look at the condition of the church around us now, when we look at the prioritization of, of the righteous language and the righteous dogma and the righteous behavior and the righteous singing and the, the righteous actions and, and all of these things that are perpetuated by a church that refuses to identify what it means to engage in the ministry of the gospel among the people. When people who prioritize titles, who prioritize positions, but never prioritize the people that God has called us to serve. I can imagine why Jesus was necessary, why the ministry of Jesus was necessary, because people, the church, had become a disconnecting church they so reverence God and, and the trappings of what it meant to be identified as children of God that they forgot what it meant to actually be connected intimately to that God. And that's why Jesus says, no, I didn't come to abolish the law. I came to fulfill it because you all know it. You all rehearse it. You all declare it, but you are not living the spirit of it because if you were, then the condition of God's people would look differently. I hear, I hear the words of Jesus as he spoke it to the people of his time 
And as I believe, he still speaks it to us. That's why I believe the church is experiencing a, a move. The church is moving, moving from mere doctrinal worship, moving from mere idolatry of a, a written liturgy, moving from, from mere worship of positions and, and honoring people of power, moving into the place where the church was originally meant to be, which was in and of the people. That's why Jesus said, when you look for the kingdom of my father, don't look here or there, but look, it is among us, it is within us, we are the church. Now the church is reclaiming its position in the lives of those of us who were created by God and who embrace the identity of our creator. I hear God. I hear God saying, that's why when I created I made you in the image and likeness of myself. That's why when I created, I blew my very own breath so that you might have the opportunity to come to the awareness that my ultimate gift, my ultimate will is that you become mine, that you embrace your identity, that you understand what it is to be one with me so that you will powerfully live out the purpose that I embedded in your soul. That's why I believe God drew me to this passage in the book of Numbers. In this account, you'll find, read, go back and read the second chapter as well, and you'll see that, that as the people were being prepared for a move, as God was aligning how the move should take place, and, and he was putting people in their position so that as the people of God move, they would move in accordance with the will of God. And any time God begins to outline a move, we best play our position in the move of God. I don't care what the title is. I just want to be in position. I don't care what the recognition is. I just want to be in position. I don't care what people say. I just want to be in position. I thank God for those who are fighting not to be recognized, not not for position, not for title, but my God, I thank God for those who are fighting in this season to be in position, to be where God is ordaining us to be so that the move of God might be felt in a way that we can never manufacture on our own. But the move of God comes by the will of God, empowered by the very presence and power of God. The people were being prepared to move and as they move if you look in in this they were talking about how the different tribes would be stationed to the east to the west to the north to the south and in the midst of the crowd in the midst of the people would be the Levites and the Levites would be responsible for moving the tabernacle which embodied the presence of God among the people. And if we might substitute that word to make it relevant for the day, the Levites were responsible for moving the church. The church was on the move. And as the church was on the move, it says that God assigned the moving, the responsibility of the moving of the tabernacle to the Levites. Levites, descendants of of Aaron and Moses. Levites were those who were assigned, called, who were grafted into the responsibility of being the priests of God's people. The Levites were the ones who were assigned to go into the tabernacle, the ones who were granted the gift of access into the holies of holies. The priests were the ones who were to represent the very people of God before God. The priests were the ones who had the, res were the weighty responsibility of moving the tabernacle. And I want to land on our, our scripture text for today because I think it will help us understand so much of what it means for us to actually belong 
to God. Because if we understand that Jesus was the fulfillment of the Old Testament scriptures and prophecy, then we understand then that Jesus said, I came not to replace, but I came to fulfill. Then we understand now that there has been a transition from a moving of an earthly tabernacle to Jesus saying, we don't need that building anymore. We don't need that material dwelling anymore because the kingdom of God is not trapped or confined to a temple or to a building because the kingdom of God is now within us. And so therefore, we replace the building with ourselves. We now are the church and the church is on the move. And so Jesus, I believe, was sharing with those in his time that he was the embodiment of what God had already laid out for the Levites, those of us who claim to be the church, then we have been grafted into the same responsibility of those in the Old Testament in this time who was assigned to the temple, assigned to the tabernacle, rather. And said, the Lord spoke to Moses and said, I hereby accept the Levites from among the Israelites as substitutes for all the firstborn that opened the womb among the Israelites. So therefore, God says, well, instead of allowing the firstborn to now be required to serve in my presence, in my tabernacle, instead of that, I now, I accept the Levites as substitutes for the firstborn. So there is a weighty responsibility for the Levites because God now says that what was once the requirement of all firstborn is now has become your requirement to represent my people before me. That's a weighty responsibility. That's why you should never think about ministry as lightly as many people among us do. It ain't about us. It ain't about our names being great. It ain't about people giving us accolades and people recognizing us. It ain't about people honoring and respecting. It is about the will of God being done, honoring that which God has assigned to us as a faithful responsibility as representatives of the people before God. Oh God, I pray that we represent the people before God and I pray that we take serious, more serious what it means to be the representative of God for the people, not that they might put us on a pedestal, but that they might heed the words and enter into an intimate connection with God for themselves so that they might begin to uncover what is it God that you have purpose for me. Might I pause and, and share that one of what I, what I personally believe is part of the greatest frustrations is that many people who claim to be children of God, we have grown fearful of what it means to actually live for God, to trust God in all, all of our ways, to acknowledge God in all that we do, to believe that if God be for us, can't nothing stand against us, to believe that when we are God's and God is ours, that wherever we walk, we walk with the very presence of God. That means that our past, our steps are already ordered. And if God has ordered and destined us to take a path, then we can trust that the very presence and spirit of God is always with us as we walk. Trust God and not what we see. I fear that we've gone, we've grown, we've grown fearful of what it means to actively do that. And when that happens, then the church retorts to the thing that the church knows, and that is to trust in titles and traditions and doctrine and to begin to disconnect ourselves from the very God that we claim to be connected to. And so what God says, and I just want to leave this because this thing jumped out, and I heard, I heard 
with Jesus. So I truly believe Jesus was trying to convey to the people. I heard it in this text as God was speaking to Moses and God was outlining how God felt about the Levites, what God was trying to outline for those that would be responsible for the tabernacle, for those if in present time that would represent the church, not the building, but that would be willing to honor and become the very church ourselves, for those that would inhabit the presence of God, for those that would allow their lives to become a temple in and of itself, for those that would take serious what it means to be the very vessel that God inhabits to accomplish God's will through our lives. Those is who God was speaking to. And hear what God says. God says, my God, whew. he says, the Levites shall be mine, for all the firstborn are mine. When I killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I consecrated for my own all the firstborn in Israel. Both human and animal, they shall be mine. I am the Lord. Hear the words of God. I consecrated for my own all the firstborn of Israel, both human and animal. They shall be mine. I am the Lord. You think about why we talk about tithing. Tithing ain't about just a simple practice. Tithing is saying, God, of my first fruits, I, I give you yours. I give you what is yours. Here is a tenth of my first fruits. Before I engage in anything else, I give you what belongs to you. That is what we're saying, because God says the first fruits belong to me. I give you life, I give you breath, I give you provision, so therefore, God says all I'm asking is for that which belongs to me. And we have the choice to give God what belongs to God. And God says now, now hear this, of the Levites, he said the firstborn, they belong to me. And so the Levites have served, will serve as a substitute for the firstborn. So the Levites belong to me they shall be mine i am the lord and when you go back and research that the hebrew in that it it it, it translates slightly slightly different it's a little more rough and what it says is that that they are mine they become they become and that word that's translate for mine also means me they become me they become me. That's what God was saying. Those who are assigned to serve in the tabernacle, they become me. I hear now what Jesus was trying to convey to everybody who would hear his words and follow him. Jesus says, I offer you the right to become like me and I am in my father and my father is in me that we have a gift to actually become the very essence of God. Now that, oh God, no pastor, that's blasphemous. Hear what I say, hear it carefully. We, we, church, the disconnecting church, we sometimes reverence God to a place where we have separated ourselves from God. The very God who said, I create you in my image and in my likeness. Oh my God, we can understand that on a human level so easily. I, I'm not a, a physical or biological parent myself, but, but I know so many and, and, and oftentimes it is the greatest sense of pride when a parent begins to look at a child and the child begins to display many of the qualities and traits, the positive qualities and traits of the parent. And the parent looks and says, my God, they're growing in to themselves and, and I can see a lot of me in them. And that pride makes the parent feel good. Well, my God, how must I 
our God feel when our God sees so many of us who put on the shelf the opportunity to grow in to the identity of our parent, of our creator. God says, in my image and in my likeness, I created you. I gave you my breath for life. And God, I can imagine for so many of us, is waiting on the day that God can sit as a proud parent and say, I see you starting to grow into yourself, which I see a lot of me inside of you. I see how you're loving those who don't love you. I see how you're serving those who may not serve you. I see how you're caring for those and having the compassion that I have. I see how you're extending the grace that's beyond your ability to ascertain. I see how you're welcoming those who have been ostracized by those in society. I see how you're connecting as a community and allowing my presence to be overwhelming in your midst and I see how you're walking in the power and anointing that I have destined for you. I can imagine the day when God sees so much of God's self in us because we take serious what it means to belong to God. Do you belong to God? I don't care if you belong to Grace Reformed Episcopal Church, do you belong to God? I don't care if you belong to any type of denomination. Do you belong to God? I don't care how often you frequent a building. Do you belong to God? Because it's in the belonging that we find our identity, that we find the fulfillment of our purpose, and that we find the gift of God's presence. Oh, my brother, my sister, do you belong? Do you belong to God? Now, I, I love that we serve a God who says part of your belonging ain't about being perfect. Come on, Jesus, talk to Peter. I love a God who says, I don't need you to be perfect before you belong. I love a God who says, I don't need you to dot every I and cross every T before you belong. I love that we serve a God who says, I'm willing to meet you right where you are. And the only thing I offer you is an opportunity to belong. Do you belong? to God. So many among us have right language, right titles, right actions, right behaviors, but they are just as disconnected as the sin-sick souls they protest to go after. The question for us is not do you bear a title, but do you belong? Or are you like the religious leaders that Jesus came to confront? Do you belong to the church? Do you belong to God and take your rightful position as the church? God's church is on the move. Where it's going, only God knows. But I know for myself that God is seeking those who are willing to align themselves to get in the right position, to get in place so that the move of God may continue to go forth such that we then begin to allow the power of God to flow like it hasn't in a long, long time. Do you belong to God? If you don't, my brother, my sister, it ain't difficult. It is merely acknowledging that God wants you, God created you, God purposed you, and God, that God, desires you to just say yes. Say yes to God. Say yes to the thing that God has planted in your soul that, that you know for yourself it is possible, but when you look outside, you see nothing but impossibility. That is probably why God purposed you. That is what God is calling you to. That is what God is going to use to display through you that the power of God is real. When everybody looks and see that can any good thing come from you, God says, let me use you to show the world or show the community that I've assigned to look at you. That God is real. God is real. God is real. But he's only going to be as present for you and I as we allow ourselves to truly belong to him. 
If that's you, my brother, my sister, I invite you today. This ain't just a call to membership or, or connection. This is about you and God. This is about you embracing the fact that you are the church. See, for so long, the church has been trying to dictate behaviors. But what would it look like to help remind people week in and week out, day in and day out, you are the church. What is the message that, that God is shaping you to proclaim? You are the church. So when people look at you, do they see somebody who shies away from challenges? Do they see somebody who tucks their tail and run when the time gets hard? Do they see somebody who continues to, to manipulate themselves to fit into different places because they, they desire popularity, they desire accolades? Or do they see somebody who says and mean, for God I live and for God I die? Who they see, do they see somebody who says, I will follow God with every ounce of my being, whatever God's will, I know it will be well with me. That is what God's desire is for us. That is what it means for us to become, become, become what God has intended for us. Become. Say yes to God today. Say yes to God today. And if you have said yes to God, but you found yourself participating in that process of disconnecting, may this, may this be the reminder that can fix your spirit. It ain't enough to talk the talk. It ain't enough to have the rehearsed language, the rehearsed actions. What God requires is that we bear the mark of what it means to be the church and the truly belong to God. Wherever you are, let us pray. God, it is for grace that we come, and it's because of your grace that we are able to gather together this day to worship you. Forgive us for all of the times, God, that we have substituted intimate connection for dry language, for powerless positions, for empty accolades. God, ignite in us a fire and a fervor, oh God, to reclaim what it means to be intimately connected to you for your kingdom to dwell in us, for your presence to so fill us. For those that are saying yes for the first time, God, we celebrate. We celebrate with the angels. Thank you, God. Now help us to be a community for and with them. For those of us that are being reminded of exactly how weighty the responsibility is to be yours. God, encourage us. Strengthen us. God, grant us a commitment to you like never before so that we're willing to boldly walk wherever you lead us. Where you lead, oh God, we will follow. God, we love you. We thank you that your church is on the move. We believe you that wherever you go, it is exactly where we need to be. God, grant us the discernment to see you, the courage to join you, and the commitment to stay with you. We love you. We thank you. We trust you, oh God. It's in your holy and precious name we pray. And we say amen, amen, amen. Expecting great things.
We thank God for this worship experience. As we worship together, the joy that we feel, that's a gift of community. But it is community that allows us to be able to accomplish the will of God in our midst. We can't be responsible for anybody else 
But what we do know is what God has called us together to do, what God has purposed us to do as a community. And we need everybody that's connected to this community to be full participants. Listen, whatever it is that God has called you to, to be your, your first fruits that we give back unto God, just be faithful to God. Be faithful and watch God work in your midst. Be faithful and see how God continues to use the collective faithfulness of this community to do God-sized work. Listen, whatever you have, let us pray to God for it. God, thank you for these, your tithes, and our offerings of sacrifice and love. Receive them, bless them, multiply them, O oh God, so that we might be able to use them for the works that you've called us to. Help us to be good and faithful stewards over everything you so graciously give unto us. It's in your holy and precious name we pray, and we say, Amen. 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 Listen, thank God for allowing you to worship with us on this day. It is always our prayer that something transpires in this service to bring you to a closer, more personal and intimate connection with God in your life. And may our walks reflect that. Now, let us sing together our closing song. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. forever bless and always keep us. May he always raise his countenance and allow his face to forever shine upon us. May that same God continue to remind us that even in trying times, he is still our God and we are still his children. From now until we meet again on the other side where the sun neither rises nor sets, for the sun is Jesus the Christ who's indeed the light of the world. It's in his name that we pray and let all of God's children say, Amen.